here I have a tough decision to make. Um, right here it's going to be between Jalen Rager and Justin Jefferson. Right. And that is going to be um, probably – if you're sitting in the middle of the – of the first round and this, this situation presents itself. I think you are going to have a, a little bit of a tough time. I think Jalen Rager was kind of the bell of the ball b- before the combine happened. And he ran that four, four, seven or four, four, eight, I believe. Um, and then we kind of saw Justin Jefferson sneak up on us right here. I'm going to go with the guy that I think has the higher floor. Um, and I'm going to go with Justin Jefferson um, An age 19 breakout. A guy that averaged <clears throat> uh, 29.8% dominator. He averaged his, his, his best season was a 30.7 dominator. And his, his last season, which is the, um, the, the two that we have logged the highest, is this 29% um, dominator rating. And I, I bring those two up because um, not only did was he able to, to, have, uh, to, to log 30.7% of the offense, but he did it with uh, last year when, when Joe Burrow was just coming into the system. They were learning how to revamp the offense, and he had um, a really, really big breakout year in his sophomore year, but then his junior year happens, and Joe Burrow happens, and, it, and he explodes. And not only does Joe Burrow explode, but he takes Jamar Chase on the ride with him. But the thing that people, you know, a lot of people were raving about Jamar Jamar Chase, and um, I think Justin Jefferson was looked at as the secondary option there, but Justin Jefferson has absolutely kind of like weathered the storm there. He survived and had a, a significant portion of LSU's offense in a down year, but then when the team went all the way up, he absolutely maintained, only lost about, about give or take 1% of the overall production, receiving production for LSU there. Um, this year when Joe Burrow's throwing for uh, over 6,050 touchdowns and just absolutely going bananas. And he did it while Jamar Chase was exploding next to him as well. Um, the chicken or the egg is the question, which one came first? Was it Joe Burrow? You know, were were these wide receivers good or, you know, did Joe Burrow kind of elevate them? Well, that's when we looked to last year, just. Justin Jefferson maintained a large portion of the offense despite Joe Burrow not being very good last year. So that tells me two things, that when the offense is down, Justin Jefferson is commanding opportunity. He's commanding production when he's on the field, and he's doing it with authority. And then when the team is all the way up, he's commanding the same amount maybe just a, a, a sliver less while another player is commanding another significant amount on, on, on the same team. And he's still maintaining value in production and opportunity. So that tells me that as right from the jump in terms of, of age adjusted metrics, production profile, breakout age, everything that we use as indicators that a uh, wide receiver can succeed, Justin Jefferson hits and checks the, the the box. And it tells me that when he walks into a wide receiver room in the NFL, it does not matter who is going to be there, that his floor is a, a wide receiver two and a, a strong wide receiver two in fantasy. So that's for me. And, and it, it, that's what I want to see above a guy like Jalen Rager, who I think has a higher ceiling, who might be a little bit more scheme dependent in terms of where, um, what system is going to utilize his, his overall skill set and where his draft capital ultimately lands. I think Justin Jefferson absolutely solidified himself as a potential wide receiver um, that's going to go in the first round and the back half of that first round, I think a team is going to want to pull the trigger on him. And if you give him first, uh, first round draft capital, I don't see how you can not have him within your top three wide receivers, um, off the jump. And he should be a locked and loaded, uh, first round pick in your, in your rookie drafts. I'm, I'm going to make that gamble here and I'm going to go with, uh, Jalen Rager. He's my wide receiver too in this class. Uh, provides that dynamism, <laughs> punt return ability. Hey, for real though. And then it's not just bias. I meant the data supports, what he did as a true freshman, what he did as a sophomore, and even in a down junior season, he still had the, he commanded the most, the the highest market share percentage of receptions, yards, and touchdowns. And So let me, let me go back to uh, your first round pick. So you took Jalen Rager and um, last week, Jesse in the same situation took Justin Jefferson. What is your, um, your argument for Rager over Jefferson there? Because um, I have, Jesse's argument for Jefferson over Rager. 
It's probably a whole bunch of numbers and stuff, isn't it? It's a bunch of data. <laughs> it is. It's a production. Yeah, I, I know Jesse. I know Jesse well. And uh, here's the thing. I've got Jefferson as my wide receiver four, so I'm a big fan of his game too. On the last uh, Dynasty Blueprint with McDowell and Williamson, I compared him to a Tyler Boyd type player. I think he's I think he's a rock solid wide receiver too that possesses big time wide receiver one upside. Um, maybe not as consistent as your top 12 wide receivers, but I think if we look three years from now and say that Justin Jefferson finished the season as a wide receiver one, I wouldn't be shocked. All right. I think he's just, he's a phenomenal player. And as much fanfare and acclaim as we give Jamar Chase for the season that he just had at LSU, Justin Jefferson had over 110 receptions, 1,500 yards, and 18 TDs in his own right. And that's after coming off an 870 plus yard receiving season as a sophomore. And the kid has only gotten better and better. It goes to the combine, shows that he's explosive. But I just, I see that plus a little bit more with Rager. And here's things all things equal. If both wide receivers struggle right out the gates, learning how to defeat press coverage, having to refine their route tree, the one thing that Jalen Rager is going to be able to do from day one is contribute on special teams. And I like to use the example with Adam Thielen, with Tyreek Hill, and not comparing the players. But if you go back a couple of years ago to Tyreek Hill's ascension, it started off with Kansas City with him returning punts. He was like, some people right. thought he was a gadget player. And then as he got more acclimated with the NFL, he's a freaking running back coming out of coming out of college. Then he became the Tyreek Hill that he is today. So if all things are considered equal and they both struggle learning the position at the NFL at the next level, Jalen Rager, you can throw him right back there right now as a kick returner and a punt returner, and he'll be able to contribute. So that sort of was the deciding factor. He's excellent at 50-50 balls. You can play inside, outside, and, uh, you know, he is a very dynamic player. So that that was my logic between uh, Rager and Jefferson, but I could have gone either way. Yeah, I think that's a, a fantastic argument for him, and I love the, uh, the idea of the special team side of it because that is how a lot of these players – really make their mark at the beginning as rookies if they're not getting the offense and they're not getting playing time uh you know in on their off on their team's offense but they are making a mark on special teams that gives them more of a leash to be able to learn the offense over a longer period of time which then eventually gets them into you know more snaps and then more targets and then more production at the nfl level so i i do agree with you that i you know rager definitely has that uh special team's ability to be able to come in day one kick returner punt returner whatever you need him to do on top of being you know maybe your wide receiver three or or wide receiver two depending on where he goes and then build into that wide receiver one role and even though justin jefferson i think fits that wide receiver one role out the gate more so than rager it's going to be harder for him to initially go into that role unless he's on a team like you know, like Philadelphia or Houston or somewhere that doesn't already have that wide receiver one um, and, and, you know, be able to to take over that role immediately. If he has to build his way up to that, I think it's going to be um, harder to do, especially if he's in an offense that, like you said, he kind of struggles to, uh, you know, translate and, and learn an NFL offense and, and all that stuff too. So um, I, I love the, the Rager over Jefferson argument that you just made. And then you got your boy Darrington Evans at the 210. And we're sitting here now at the 310, ready to take another pick here. And Scott Connor said, Jeff Jefferson, I bet to contribute really early, landing spot dependent, but quicker value ascension if he hits. So one of my thought processes is it, predicting landing spot is super hard. But if right. if if the Bengals go Joe Burrow round, you know, when they go Joe Burrow with the number one overall pick. I mean, what if they pair Jefferson back with him at the, you know, at the top of the second? Now you've got the Burrow Jefferson connection again. I mean, people would be going crazy to try to get Justin Jefferson. But I mean, I could see him fitting in Houston. I could see him in Philly. Like, there's some really good landing spots for wide receivers in this draft class. Just fit. Um, I, I, I say all the time that these wide receivers, there's so many different buckets. Like you've got the big boy wide receivers and T Higgins. You've got the route running technicians and the Jerry Judy's and the Tyler Johnson's of the world. And then you've got just those, those just playmakers, right? Henry Ruggs, Jalen Rager. I mean, it's just, it's a really good class of wide receivers, man. And, and I agree. I think Jefferson is, is locked and loaded contributor right away. I, I think he's a, 
a a low WR two, high WR three out the gate. You know, like like that's really what I feel about him. He's that he's that good. Man.